Well, hello there everyone. It has been uh, a minute or two since we, uh, we last had a video from yours truly. So we're going to kick off our first video of the year with a fabrication video on this lovely example of a Mark 1 MR2. Okay, so now we've got the car up in the air, we're underneath, and we can sort of see the room we've got to play with. So obviously there we've got the, uh, the outlet ports on the head. Then we need to sort of uh, feed the manifold into this sort of area and then we'll sort of bring the pipe up we'll come this way um, i've had a custom silencer made that will take uh, a majority of this space here a bit like the factory one and then we'll loop it around into the box and then we're just going to go with a very simple two and a half inch straight cut tip so we're going to start again with the manifold right so the first thing we need to do is decide whether the manifold's going to be installed from the top or the bottom now to install it from the bottom would mean removing this drive shaft so we can get the manifold up and onto the flange but there's also a, a decent sized gap at the top to feed it in from the top um, obviously we want the primaries to be as long as physically possible just so we can get that nice power band on the engine uh, but also we want to make it to be able to be removed easily preferably on the driveway and to remove a drive shaft isn't always convenient to do unless you've got a lift like we have here and it's above your head so I'm going to cut some pipe up we've got some inch and a half for our primaries and then we're going to step these up to uh, an inch and three quarter for our secondaries okay so the customer has specified how he would like the manifold to be made based on some research done by some guy in the states so that means we're going to use a inch and a half primary which is fine i've just done a couple of squash tests and inch and a half as you can see squash to fit is a loose fit so lucky for us we've got the the tube expander and i've managed to dial in the tube expander so by the time you've expanded the inch and a half and overlized it it's a nice snug fit into the flange so what we'll do now is we'll go bolt this back to the engine and we'll then evaluate the next step which will be the secondary So we've got a flange bolted to the engine with our inch and a half primary. So now I just need to decide on where we're going to start the secondary. Now the customer has specified a length for the primary, which is eight inches, and after which it will then flare up and then go into this inch and three quarter in one tube. It's a four-one design, not a four-two-one. So I'm not sure if I mentioned that already. So I think we're more likely to use this 45 degree bend. So we'll take the flange back off the engine, we'll measure this primary out to 8 inches, we'll cut it, trim it, and then we'll come back to this part. So yeah, as you've just seen there, we've taken that hour, inch and a half, on the swaging machine, and we've swaged it up so it's a nice, snug fit inside the 175 what we did before that is we marked the tube you can probably just sort of see the indentations there so we've marked um, eight inches out from the start of the head flange and as you can see our eight inch mark is actually on the swage there so uh, maybe a couple of millimeters off but i think that's a, a decent enough compromise now we've got our first primary to the length we need we now need to cut down the secondary now again uh, the instructions that i've been given is to have the primary approximately 12 inches long so we're already eight inches into the first piece which was instructed to terminate at eight inches so that doesn't really give us much length to use in this second part of the primary so uh, we're going to play it by ear because we do have some space constraints under there to deal with in between the engine and the firewall and also we need to account for when the engine's moving and it's rocking back and forth it doesn't touch anything so yeah we're going to go get this back on the car again with the flange and then i'll see you in a second when i start mocking this part up. 
Right, so we've put the 175 tube, as you can see, we've got a little step there, it comes out here. Probably just want to move that down a bit, just so we've got a, a nice finger gap clearance against this piece here. So what we'll do now is we'll take this back off, we'll measure the remaining uh, distance, which I believe is going to be uh, four inches. I might just go four and a half inches just to make sure we've got plenty of length. And then we'll come back and then we'll test fit the collector, make sure the collector clears everything. And then from there, we can do the rest of the car. Right, so here we are again. We've got the head flange back on the engine. I just put a couple of tacks on there so that doesn't move. That still gives us a bit of maneuverability with this. We can still rotate this one because I have not welded this one to that tube. We've now got our collector and there we just sort of need to see what clearances we've got and sort of straight away. See, we're a bit too close here. The drive shaft. I mean, obviously we've got an air gap, but obviously we'd like to improve that where possible. Uh, but what I have done, we can see this on the side there, you can see a mark tube. Obviously we've got 12 inches all the way up here, but we also need to count for the depth of the swing as well, because obviously that will come into play with the maximum length of the prime rig. So rather than cut it too short and then have to make it longer, I've made it too long, so you know we can get to the stage and then, you know, all we've got to do is take it out, put it back in the bandsaw, do another cut, come back, and then we'll finesse the location of this collector before we go to the next step. But we'll go shorten this down by about 30 mil to start with, and then we'll progressively go shorter until we get up to our 12 inch mark. And then we'll try to get some much needed clearance on this collector around this drive shaft. And in fact, just saying that I've just noticed, obviously, We've got the suspension at the moment on full droop. The clearance here is going to get shorter when the car is on the floor and possibly lowered. Yeah, that's another thing that we need to look into as well. Be like a challenge. Be like a challenge. Right, so I have shortened this collector as much as I physically can. So we've got maximum engagement inside the swage portion of the collector. And I am, I'm just not happy with the clearance i'm happy with the clearance this side we've got a finger but this side i'm just not convinced that by the time that drive shaft's level is this weight here is gonna miss it so uh, i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take this 45 bend that i've put in here i'm gonna replace it with 25 degrees and what we'll aim to do is bring the collector down at like a shallower angle like that and that will give us the clearance we need on everything it's going to compromise the customer's requested length on the primaries by about an inch but i think in this case because obviously we've got a non-factory engine in this chassis we're going to have to make do with the room that we've got i'm pretty sure that's what i'm going to do i'm going to go do all that off camera and i'll bring you back once i've made some progress i'm happy with uh, okay i'm back we have got somewhere um took me longer than i'd like to admit to get to this point but we've ended up going from a 20 degree bend to around a 35 degree now unfortunately i don't have a mandrel bender and a 35 degree bend just isn't physically something that we stock so i've had to use one of our 3d printer fixtures to cut the angle that i need and then i've had to weld a straight piece on there so it actually sockets onto the manifold like so we've got our piece now and we've got a collector and we have got, I need to adjust it a bit, about there, so it comes out square. And there we go, look, we've now got a fingers gap. And I think by the time that suspension's got a bit of weight under it and the drive shaft angle changes a bit, um, I think we're going to be about where we need to be. Um, only issue I could probably see if he actually lowers it a bit too much in the future, it might start touching this balancer. This rubber damper on the drive shaft, uh, but I think at which case, I think it's just a case of just moving it down the drive shaft a bit um, and it should clear. But obviously, we can only work with the spaces and constraints we've got on the car at the moment. But I don't see any other way we can get that to clear through there with any more clearance than what we've given it. So uh, I'm thinking of just shortening this piece by about an inch and a half. 
and that'll allow the collector to slide further up and that'll give us about as maximum clearance as we can physically give it while still trying to stay within the uh, the length constraints that the customer's giving us so we'll go do that now and then once we've got that first primary mocked up uh, the rest of it should be pretty easy And that is why we back purge. So there we go. That is the basis of our manifold. We've got our very first primary done. Now it's important to get the first primary in place with the collector, because then from there, you can build the rest of the manifold without having to do a million trips to the car and back. So the rest of the manifold we'll be able to build over on the fabrication bench now. Overall, I'm happy with it. We've had to compromise slightly on the specified primary length by about half an inch, um, but I haven't accounted for the actual uh, additional pipe work inside the collector. So I suppose you could probably say we have sort of reached our target length. What I'm gonna go do now is I'm gonna go mock up the rest of the primaries, come back to the car and we'll test fit it to make sure we can actually get it back into the engine bay, whether it be from the top or the bottom. We'll go do a quick welding and fabrication montage and we'll see you in a minute or so. So uh, 
that's the manifold pretty much 90 95 percent done we've got two more things to do to that before it can go back on the engine for its final time with us and as you can see we have got the manifold bolted to the ng on we've got a collector and everything so my original plan was to put the v-band on the bottom of the collector here and then we'll sort of have like a, a like a 1d radius bend come off here but i'm going to get my uh, precision piece of measured equipment and as you can see we've not got a massive amount of real estate there before ground clearance becomes an issue so i've been through our off cut spin and I found this so it's a, a 1D90 that's had a bit chopped off of it so that's maybe I'm going to guess 75 degrees because I'm going to take I'm going to guess we've taken a 15 degree wedge out of that so what we're going to do is we're going to put that on there like that and then we'll attach the v-band to the end of that and then that means that this will actually be slightly higher than the sump so it'll be out of harm's way from potential damage on the roads etc so uh, yeah then I think from there we're going to bring the exhaust out through this sort of like gap here sort of like tucked up behind there as much as possible now I have put this back box on the car just to sort of gauge what clearances I need to work with before we get to the next step so this box here I've had custom made for this job uh, the customer wanted this car to be a track friendly system and so I've gone with the, the biggest silencer I can fit within the area we've got here next step is just need to finalize the location here we'll get that welded on to get the v-band welded on then that's the manifold done back stay on the car and then we can crack on with the rest of the exhaust system right so i've just welded up uh, this little assembly which is what i want to go on the end of here uh, just because I had so many loose parts, I just physically couldn't hold them all together. So now everything sort of uh, is nice and attached. So uh, hopefully now we can lock up our final position. This. Right, so what we'll do now is I'm going to go get the pen. We'll mark this up for this piece here. We'll take the manifold off. We're we'll just going to tack this on there for now with the V-band. Um, I don't want to commit to welding this on there fully until I've got the rest of this piece figured out uh, but I think before we then do the rest of this piece into the box we're gonna hang the box with some hanger bar uh, but yeah let's get this next stage done um, let's get cracking so that's actually worked out really well so literally just on the the first muck up pretty sure I have nailed where I want this flex to be so we've got it level this way and we've also got it parallel just sort of using the anti-roll bar here as a uh, as a reference point uh, but yeah i'm actually really happy with that so before we can continue with connecting this to the box we we need to hang the silencer so the factory silencer uses this mount hole here and this mount hole here there is no other mount on here that i can find anyway um, that holds the factory rear silencer i'm not happy with just using those two i really would like an additional support at the back somewhere so what i've got here is i keep these in stock for just the occasion so this is like a universal uh, exhaust rubber hanger it's got a m8 thread on there so what we've got at the back here is that we've got these two bolt holes that so that means that this universal exhaust rubber that we carry goes in its place. So now we have created an additional mounting point for the rear silencer. Because I'll be honest with you, the silencer is not the, the lightest silencer. There's a fair bit of weight in there because obviously all the packing and everything in there to make it track friendly. And that gives me an additional support on the rear of the box. So what I like to do is to make sure that the silencers are hung independently and do not have to rely on a connection to the exhaust system and a manifold to support it so this way the silencer will be fully supported under its own weight and actually just make things last a bit longer make sure there's no stress where there doesn't need to be any stress so what we'll do now is we're gonna get the bat box back on there and we'll get some exhaust hanger and we'll start making some hangers i think what we'll do first is we'll get the bat box hung on these two rear mounts here and while it's supported by those two rear hangers we can then 
work on this rear hanger. We can just bring a bit of hanger bar above this uh, section here. It's not going to be in the way of anything and it'll look nice and neat. So uh, I know my contraption here looks pretty silly, but this just wasn't holding the box level. Come up with uh, this uh, rather ridiculous tower of uh, shite that I found around a workshop. But we have got the, the bat box somewhat level. It's not perfectly level, but we're gonna fix that in the next steps. So uh, unfortunately, I can't put the bat box the way I want. I really wanted this hole to be here, and I'll see this hole to be here on this side of the box. But unfortunately, you probably can't see it now, but there's a, a great big seam, obviously where they weld the, uh, the casing together. And it just, obviously we really want the nice polished side is the bit that you're gonna see when it's fitted to the car. So a bit of minor detail there, but I've, uh, I've mocked up with some uh, 1D90s already. Uh, we just go with a basic uh, two and a half inch straight cut tip and it's, the box is off, is back set enough that I can do something here with uh, a tip. So uh, I'm not gonna worry too much about that. So what we need to do now is we need to hang the box, which shouldn't be too difficult of a job. I think what we'll probably do is we'll bend up some 90 degree hangers and weld them along this part of the casing here and come this way. Then that way we can put like a rear foot reinforcement bar in here. We should be able to do the same with this side as well. So I'll go cut some hanger bar. On top of that as well, we need to get the bat box central. Now with my eye on the tape measure, it seems these five vent holes here are central for the car. But if you look behind it as well, you can see this, uh, this heat shield behind, and you can see how it has this little swage mark back where me, me nail is. So what I've done is I've lined it up for those two swage marks. Now luckily the box is, is, is about the same distance between these two swage marks on the heat shield so um easy way to make sure the box is as central as we can physically put it obviously when we get the hangers on there we'll have a bit of rain to move it left and right before we put our final hanger on um so yeah let's go start and get these two hangers done rid of the uh, the uh, tower of shite holding up the box and we are now back to using the spider so now we've got this uh, this first hanger bar on you can see we've put like a nice little support in there as well just to make sure the single hanger isn't under any additional stress it also allows us to remove the box without losing the position of this hanger so what we need to do now is come over to this side and we're just going to do the same job as what we've done the other side on this side. So what we need to do now before we start putting the other hanger on is make sure this box is level with the car. So when you're following it from behind, you know, it's got one key and it looks best as it can. So I've got this little angle finder here. We'll go ahead and zero it off on this panel. All right, you know what? 0.6 of a degree. That is bad, is it? So there we go, that's the hanger on this side done, which leaves us with the final one on the rear. Let me just take this short piece off so we can actually see what we're doing. So that's the additional mount that we installed earlier. And as luck would have it, so this is one of the hangers that was a reject from this side and wouldn't you know it it's perfect 
for here. Abs look at that look. Absolutely perfect. So uh, that's uh, using up materials that otherwise would have been a waste. So uh, yeah, we'll all get this tapped on. So all we've got to do now is lift the car up in the air on the lift and then the back box should stay where it is. Banging. Ah, beautiful, nice, nice, nice. Right, so I've actually skipped a step in the video, but I've welded the V-band onto the box here. So all I need to do now is put this uh, this flex section back on like so and then we just need to make a link from there into that flex i think if we get the sling pipe done then all i've got to do tomorrow is come in weld it all up and then do the tip just the tip take all of this back off the car, head over to the welding bench, get it all welded on, then we put a final fit on everything back on the car. It doesn't need to come back off again once we've welded up. And all we've got to do is just a tip. So uh, we're going to weld like a little slip section onto the end of the box that side, and that will allow us to sort of like get the tip exactly where we need it. Yeah, we're going to go through uh, another little welding montage see you once all of this lovely lot's fitted back to the MR2. So we are on the home stretch. The end is looking very close. Last thing we've got to do is the tip. Pretty simple job. So when I had the back box off, while I got on the bench, I've welded this section on here. Now we've used our Swager expanding machine to expand that. So it accepts a two and a half inch bit of tube, like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a two and a half inch 1D bend. We're going to weld that onto the end. Because of how the box sits, 
that comes down at a slight angle. So what we're going to do is we're going to chop this uh, this bend down at the end of the the bend radius. You can sort of see a line mark there in the material. And then what we'll do is we'll go for the off cut spin, and we should have a nice off cut with a, a slight bend to it, which will bring out the tip straight. <laughs> So I've been through the off-cut spin and I found this lovely off-cut here and it's absolutely perfect. Just the right amount of kick up to bring it level with the floor and that looks absolutely good. All we need to do is trim maybe about 20 mil off this pipe here so we can centralize this in this sort of cut out here. I think that's what we're aiming for anyway. I'll go and mark this up, we'll get this tacked on, we'll get all this welded up. We're nearly done boys. And there we go, we've got the tip. Maybe just need a slight bit of adjustment to point it up a bit. Uh, but that's your point of having a slip joint here. And it's not quite central in that gap either, but we can adjust that. Um, yeah, so uh, let's just go around it. So we've got like a nice equal clearance between the valance and the silencer. And we've got this side of the box with our reinforced hangers. Same this side reinforced hangers the rear hanger is working absolutely spot on uh, <clears throat> a little bit of a caveat because we've got this rear hanger you have to unbolt this hanger from the chassis in order to get the uh, get the box off and on as you'll see when i was installing it we've got a flexi i've just polished all of the colors at the pipe i just think it looks a bit cleaner and we've got our manifold all done, another V-band connection there. We've got our O2 sensor port there, which is nice, nice, nice. Manifold from underneath. And then here's the manifold from above, looking nice. We've got our tag there in a nice prime location. So when people look down at this uh, lovely engine conversion in this MR2, they'll know which uh, that guy with a welder made it so yeah unfortunately we are not going to be able to hear this exhaust system there's a load of coolant hoses missing off the engine um, and some bits and bobs I'm not even gonna attempt to try and start it so unfortunately we're not gonna hear how awesome this exhaust system sounds but I'm pretty sure the customer will pop down to us at some point and we'll probably pop a little sound snippet on the page when that eventually happens so yeah thanks for watching i really hope you enjoyed watching this fabrication video as much as i've enjoyed actually making the system um, if you've made it this far we're going to ask you all a favor and that is uh, drop a comment down below um, it could be anything share the video like the video and subscribe um, it really helps with all the youtube algorithm bullshit and it'd be awesome if we could grow this channel a bit more so we could chuck some more fabrication content out to you so with that being said i want to thank you for watching and we'll see you shortly in the next video